Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you guys hear me loud and clear? Um, so I, I'm a mechanical engineer with the Army Material Systems Analysis Activity. I just returned from a seventh month deployment um, from Afghanistan, and I'm going to talk about the uh, different programs that I worked on. Um, I was deployed for uh, the RDECOM had a unit, uh, the Field Assistance and Sci Science Technology Center. Uh, they, they were a unit that provided engineering support uh, for the warfighter. They worked directly with the warfighter, helping provide uh, new solutions for issues that arrive in, in theater. My particular uh, position was a power and energy um, uh, subject matter ac expertise. Um, uh, and and for, for RFAS-C, we worked with several different organizations uh, throughout the Army, different PM shops, and, and everything was a you know, a, a very collaborative effort. Um, and so uh, the, the first system that I worked on was the Afghan Microgrid Project. Um, this was a significant um, accomplishment by PMF. They helped uh, demonstrate the uh, capabilities of microgrid technology in an operational environment. Um, and as their contractor support ended, um, they came to RFSC and we came up with a collaborative effort where we helped support operation and maintenance of the, the microgrid. Um, and the microgrid is in the, uh, the white containers that you see on the screen. Um, it was a one megawatt system that helped uh, reduce the fuel burden on the camp in uh, Afghanistan. Um, and, and with this relationship that we had with the camp, we leveraged uh, the engineering support that we were already providing them um, to further enhance the energy efficiency of the base camp. Um, and that would be uh, a new program that we started, uh, the Energy, energy Initiative Proving Ground. Um, th this, this is where we implemented new energy efficient technologies, which included uh, insulated liners, uh, solar shades, and various other technologies to help reduce the fuel burden on the uh, Army. Th this is sort of we, where we demonstrated how we can reduce fuel consumption and, and uh, save not only on cost but on, on uh, the burden on the fuel, on the warfighter. Um, and these are just some sample photos of the various different technologies. Um, our next study was an energy efficient base camp, whereas the previous effort, we looked at uh, the different technologies systematically, kind of compare the different uh, benefits of the various technologies, whereas this base camp was a highly successful uh, energy efficient base camp where we, we took all the different technologies that we were uh, evaluating in theater and, and put it all together um, and, and demonstrated how a three 150 man base camps would, uh, would look. Uh, and we worked very closely with uh, the program manager for sustainment systems to help uh, collect uh, data, power, water, uh, temperature, to help build and simulate models for the Army um, to build uh, for future um, efforts. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we good afternoon. We would like to invite you to attend the Army's briefings this hour. In Hall B, Site 1775, there will be a 1300 briefing on Energy Initiative Proving Ground and a 1330 briefing on America's Enduring Operational Reserve A Force of Decisive Action. In Hall A, Site 539, there will be a 1300 briefing on novel technologies and individual soldier protection, and a 1330 briefing on the U.S. Army South's personal recovery reintegration missions. Thank you. Uh, and, and here in this photo, or this slide, we have several different photos of the different technologies that we were evaluating in theater. Um, we had uh, rigid and soft wall shelters that we were um, demonstrating in an energy efficient base camp. Um, and. Uh, a lot of these systems were acquired through the hard work of uh, program manager for sustainment systems. Um, uh, another effort we had as part of the Energy Initiative Proving Round was to demonstrate the, um, the impact of smart energy efficient shelters, which includes uh, you know, solar panels uh, and, and highly efficient uh, walls. And, um, insulation and high efficiency LED lighting. Uh, this particular project was a, for the 401st uh, Air Force Air, Air AFSB uh, in Bagram. Uh, this was uh, a system that took months of planning and coordination to help set up and provide for the uh, 401st. Uh, 
Um, this incorporates several different technologies all in one uh, particular system. Uh, in a similar effort we um, had for the Energy Initiative Proving Ground, uh, this particular uh, energy efficient shelter was uh, a, a bee hunt alternative, whereas currently we've got a lot of um, base camps that are building bee huts uh, made out of plywood, just very generic material that are not very insulating. And so uh, this was our alternative to, to demonstrate how we could save um, a significant amount on fuel use um, by reducing the demand on uh, heating and cooling um, and also providing a uh, more sustainable s uh, shelter for the Army. Uh, and the next effort was a, an effort where we work with the uh, Security Forces and Advising and Science. Uh, security Forces advise and assist uh, team in uh, Fobshank. Uh, this was a um, joint effort um, with uh, program uh, manager for sustainment systems where we were um, improving the, the logistics school that the Afghans um, were using um, as, par as a partnership with the uh, U.S. Army. Um, it, it was in very poor shape, so what we decided to do was to provide them um, with a new facility that could be used year-round, whereas uh, the current conditions were too poor to, to really be used uh, throughout the year. Um, and so uh, this was still in the production uh, and planning stages, so the general concept of what we were putting together is on the upper right corner. Uh, and uh, there was a uh, operational needs statement that was put out um, uh, in for, for essentially a, a net zero energy and water um, uh, movement towards improving uh, fuel and water consumption um, at very remote regions in Afghanistan. Um, and, and our role was to help uh, collect data and, and to provide engineering support um, for the warfighter. Um, and some of the technologies that we were um, assessing were uh, microgrid technologies, liners, shades, um, and other energy efficient uh, technologies. Uh, so in, in summary, I, I, we, I think uh, the group did a, a lot of good work. Um, you know, we're, we're working on a lot of uh, improvement on base camp um, energy efficiency, um, but what we were looking into is improving on the soldier power, um, man portable systems um, for expeditionary base camps. Um, and so this is um, uh, one of the, the base camps that we had in Afghanistan. Um, it was still in the um, uh, building up uh, of the, the entire base camp, but this is just a, a sample of what it looked like. Um, so, any questions? Right. We'll, uh, sir, here's a microphone. All right, thanks. The uh, measures of effectiveness, I see the scale there. How, how do you measure what success is, what that looks like for the soldiers? Um, these, could you repeat that, please? Sorry, the, the measures of success and measures of performance, how, how do you measure what success um, looks like for well, the soldiers? What we, what we were doing was we were collecting um, uh, data um, at an extremely high fidelity. We were collecting a lot of power, temperature uh, and water usage and we were also collecting fuel usage so over time we were able to see um, our fuel use for the base camps drop over time and, and as we were doing that we were um, displaying the the benefits to the soldier essentially here th this is what we have to provide you guys if, if you can uh, be more mindful of of how you um, use your building your your laundries or latrines or whatever it might be for that particular base camp um, to get them more mindful of saving on, on fuel, water, um, and, and over time they started to, to really see the benefits. They're, the the shelters were more comfortable, they were happier, um, and, and they understood the difference between um, what they used to have and, and what the new technology help provided them um, for not just short term but long term as well. More sustainable technology. Uh, I don't know. Hope I answered your question. Yeah, the uh, the other part of my question is, uh, at least I've seen it before, in the uh, overhead camouflage netting, they had 
things built into it that helped gather or collect solar energy? Is that some of the technology that you use there? Yes, the, the uh, solar shades that we were using weren't uh, power producing solar shades, they were uh, energy reducing, so pretty much to drop the demand on energy. Um, and uh, there, that particular technology is more beneficial um, during the, the warmer months. Um, during the cooler months, you'd usually take that off. And, and what was really beneficial throughout all the seasons were the, the ins insulated uh, liners. Um, so the, the force provider camps were, um, had been, have been fielded with uh, um, just your basic liner where it wasn't very insulating. So there was a huge demand on heating and cooling throughout the year. With this, the new insulation, you, you suddenly drop that demand on fuel. And that way, you can use your generators to provide power for, for different areas of the camp. Um, and so what we were looking into were, was also solar powered shades as well to help feed into the electrical grid for the base camps as well. Um, but uh, that, that was still an ongoing acquisition um, process that we had to go through. Um, so did you still have to use air conditioning in the tents or was it yes, just naturally the, cooler? Th the need for the heating and cooling uh, dropped significantly with the new technology. Um, and and we're putting together a report to, and, and that should come out next year sometime on, on the fuel savings and the cost savings of, of the different um, technologies that we use. Any other questions? Down here. Yeah, uh, to, to kind of follow on to the Colonel's question, uh, did you look or will you look in the future about the supportability of, of this by soldiers? Do they have the equipment to move it? Do they have the skills to maintain it? Do they have the ability, uh, the illities to, to recover? I'm sorry, it was, it was hard to hear that question. Now, does the, uh, the soldier's ability to support the system? Um, and that, that the, unit's ability to, the unit's ability to um, maintain, move, et cetera? Um, whole, yes, as part of what we were, um, aiming for was to not only to demonstrate the technology but also to to teach the soldiers on how to to um, operate and maintain the equipment to keep it up and running um, throughout the year whereas it's, it wasn't sort of a, an install and forget um, you just you go and you stop head over to the next base camp we, we also wanted to show them you know how to set up the solar shades so for one of the camps was a, it was a navy specific camp we set up one of the solar shades with the, with the soldiers and said, okay, now we're going to set up solar shades for the rest of your base camp. And and they actually were pretty gung-ho about it. They were like, all right, we got this. And they just took it and ran with it. Um, and they installed 30 of these shades um, after we we went step by step and showed them how to do it. Um, and and so they know exactly when to install them throughout the year. And they say, okay, we know solar shades are more useful at a particular part of the year, whereas um, soldiers be able to maintain this without contractor support? Um, yes. Um, where we deployed the systems were there was a lot of contractor support, O&M, um, already established. But what we were doing, we were going out to the far end, um, the remote regions in Afghanistan, and, and deploying the same systems out there um, and, and showing them exactly how to use them. You know, how does that benefit them in the long term, short term? Um, and so, yeah, it was both. All right, any other questions? Oh, no other questions? Well, thank you very much. Appreciate you. you coming in.